Johann Leo Weisgerber, February 25, 1899, Metz August 8, 1985, Bonn, was a Lorraine-born German linguist, who also specialized in Celtic linguistics. He developed the organicist or relativist theory that different languages produce different experiences. He was son of a village teacher who served as a young man in the German army in Flanders and could not return to his home city for that. During World War II his band Celticist ideology was co-opted to support the German war effort as did pro-Polish and pro-Czech ideology on the side of the Allies. Scholarly Career after studying in Bonn, 1918, Weisgerber taught as a professor of general and comparative linguistics at Rostock University, 1927, Marburg University, 1938, and Bonn University, 1942. He was an editor of the journal Wörter und Sachen, which he used as a vehicle for his ideas. After the Second World War he taught mainly in Bonn. He wrote prolifically throughout his career. Among other activities he founded the modern German language journal Work and Eswert, and was a co-founder of the Institute für Deutsche Sprache, Mannheim. Theory of Language Reacting to older linguists' emphasis on form, especially phonology and morphology, Weisgerber initiated what he called an Holt Besagene grammatic, content-related grammar. Starting from the study of translation problems and of color amnesia, he contributed notably to the theory that language determines and structures our apprehension of reality. This was initially influenced by the structuralist theories of Ferdinand de Saussure, but Weisgerber's theory soon took him far beyond the simple sociorian linkage of linguistic form and semantic content. His other debts were to Wilhelm von Humboldt, Notably the insight that language diversity implies a diversity of worldviews, and Joe Trier, concurrently with whom he developed the structuralist idea of a word field, or lexical field. Weisgerber argued that each language community has its own perception of the world, different from that of other groups. There are words or phrases that are specific to each language community. Some concepts may be shared by two, or more linguistic communities, but with different connotations in each case. Each language community structures reality in a different way, according to its own language codes. In this respect, languages imply a worldview that can produce sustained cultural differences. Centrally, Weisgerber contended that each language community was engaged in a process of wording the world word under welt by means of its mother tongue, mediating between the forms, i.e. words, and grammatical structures, of a language, and the external world. There was a linguistic interworld, Sprachliche Swische and Welt, which operates directly, indirectly, and in part autonomously, in ways peculiar to that language. In acquiring a specific mother tongue, a speaker will also unconsciously acquire and be influenced by its distinctive categorizations and structures. These effects permeate the entire community and shape its perceived world. From 1925 through into the 1970s, Weisgerber repeatedly cited color terms in support of his views. Categorization of color impressions under a small number of generally applicable, abstract terms like blau and rot was, for him, the outcome of long evolutionary development, and only a minority of languages had achieved this. Specifically, he found it remarkable that the German language had mastered, buoltiged, the entire world of color with only eight abstract color words. Weisgerber claimed in 1929 to have discovered a significant restructuring in the field of visual impressions. Simplistically, he reported a decline since ancient Germanic times in the verbal expression of color, with objects nowadays perceived as color bearers, not color transmitters, Farb Traeger. Nicht Farb Sender. Empirical evidence for this has since proved to be contradictory. Better supported, but still in need of verification, was his converse hypothesis of a corresponding historical shift in the expression and perception of glance, a term comprising shininess, radiance, etc. These non-chromatic light phenomena had earlier been freely rendered adjectivally, but were now mainly expressed in modern German, glanzurban, like glanzen and skimmern. 
Weisgerber's conception of linguistic relativity was more extreme than that of Benjamin Lee Whorf or Edward Sapir, with whom the theory is most often associated. Resonance in the Anglo-Saxon world was limited partly by Weisgerber's arcane terminology, but more by his French-German ethnic background, in an Americanized scientific community dominated by structuralist universalists like Noam Chomsky. In Germany he remained a significant figure in German linguistics well into the 1960s, when politically as well as linguistically his views fell into scientific discredit. His theory was then overtaken by new structuralist and universalist approaches from Britain and America as well as elsewhere in Europe. History was out, structure was in. One of his pupils, Helmut Gipper, prominently developed his ideas in modified form in a series of articles and as co-editor of the Duden Grammatic from the late 1950s onwards. Gipper was also influential as co-editor of an extensive bibliography on Sprachenotsverin. As linguistics broadly within the Weisgerber tradition has come to be known. Weisgerber can be seen as an epigonic scholar of the German idealistic and romantic traditions alike, that insisted on the compatibility of reason and history, and did not play off the first contrary the latter. That he did not resist narrowing it down to irrational and silly Germanicism slash Celticism does not distinguish him from the academic climate of his times. Than Celticism before World War II, Weisgerber established links with Celtic nationalists in Ireland, Britain, and Brittany, which were seen as a threat to national unity by the Respessive majority governments, the British Crown, and the centralist French Republic. The Breton nationalists joined Germany at the beginning of the war, at least some of them. After the fall of France Weisgerber initiated the creation of the Breton Celtic Institute and directed the radio station Radio Ren Bretagne, Radio Ren of Brittany, which broadcast the first radio transmissions in the Breton language, something that most Bretons had been waiting for unsuccessfully for decades. These ventures were perceived by the French resistance as German-sponsored propaganda organizations, which they in fact were. The Salmenting Assumed, or real, ethnic fractions in enemy states was a political tactic used by all warfaring states, Weisgerber thus being in a line with Lawrence of Arabia, the German supporting Irish independence, or the British supporting Polish or Czech independence, it is not genuinely Nazi, nor does it hint at a character slash scientific flaw in Weisgerber. The counter tactic was employed by America's ally Joseph Stalin, who deported hundreds of thousands of non Russians, mostly by means of American military logistics. Roosevelt agreed after the war that all ethnic non Russians that had fled or otherwise collaborated with the Germans be handed over to the Russians, especially Ukrainians and Polish, where most were either actively killed or starved to death in work camps. After the defeat of the Nazis, Weisgerber assisted the members of the Breton Bezentbureau SS militia, led by Celestine Lane, providing them with false papers to allow them to escape to Ireland with the help of other Celticists, a practice that can be seen both critically politically and slash or humane 